Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this one, we'll talk about how Adam Aaron calls out short sellers and declares that it's game over, as well as how AMC toxic swaps are becoming too large and many other topics. Let's start here. The CEO of AMC says that bankruptcy is unthinkable as the company's shares hit a 52-week low. This is significant because once again, short sellers want AMC to fail. But now that bankruptcy is ruled out completely and Adam Aaron doesn't see a remote chance, it's game over for short. If you look at more details regarding this and comprehend why it's happening, laden with $4.5 billion in debt, AMC has enough cash on hand to get through 2024. Since Aaron is projecting strong box office results for 2025 and 2026, the executive believes that everything will go smoothly from there. Before we go any further, though, let's break this down. As of right now, for 2024, nothing appears to be going to affect AMC, so from where we are as a company, things are going extremely well. As for 2025 and 2026, we're going to be looking at, we're definitely going to be seeing major improvements because of the prediction of strong box office results. Furthermore, the fact that there is money in the bank gives me the impression that not only have we weathered the storm thus far, but that we will weather any remaining storm as well. This is all very important, in my opinion, because what he is describing is clearly what is going to happen. He is saying that the factors affecting AMC at the moment have obviously been withstood, and it is crucial to realize that the fact that the shorts are driving down the price of AMC clearly limits our ability to raise funds because, on the one hand, we will have to sell more shares, or alternatively, if we decide on a fixed number of shares, we will raise less money. These are the issues that we are dealing with, but we have recognized them and overcome them. As a result, we have avoided bankruptcy, which means that we are currently experiencing another round of short panic. In the case of AMC, we have observed that the company is increasing its cash and improving its fundamentals, but when we look at its shorts, we see that they are losing money on a daily basis and that their fundamentals are declining. This is precisely what is happening at the moment. It is crucial that AMC avoids bankruptcy because doing so would imply that the shorts are still trapped. Thus, in my opinion, Adam Aon is effectively saying, checkmate shorts, which means that the game is over and that you will be forced to pay us in order to leave the play. This fits in nicely with the recent post in which we discussed how Adam Aaron genuinely wants a MOAS because of his shares in AMC. I'm interested to know what you guys think about that. Furthermore, if we look at what's happening with shorts right now, we can see how this is affecting them. News like this is coming out, but what we're seeing right now is that short interest is still rising at 20.56%. You can also see that in just one month, there has been an 8.52% increase in short interest. Every day, the share price is rising due to the short interest. So what we can see for this is that, in the first place, by clearly increasing the shorts, they're driving down the price. But again, why are they doing this? That means AMC would not want us to stay out of bankruptcy if they could get money. So they keep increasing the amount they lose when they short and try to bring down the value of AMC since all we can see at the moment is this credit. The story shows that the head of the FDIC says the U.S. is ready in case a big Wall Street bank fails. It's a big surprise. There has been a lot of news lately about how to make sure big banks don't fail and how to get ready in case one does. All of a sudden, a lot of new articles, rules, regulations, and policies are being put in place to try to keep Wall Street's big banks and other big businesses from going bankrupt again. You can see a link between what's really happening and what's going on with AMC right now. Credits who hold toxic swords have already been shown what can happen, and we'll talk more about that later. Now, the FDIC says that the U.S. is ready in case a big Wall Street bank falls. There do seem to be real chances that these big ones will fail. This is related to what we recently talked about, which is why I said there is a difference when Credit Suisse is a participant in the FIAC. We talked about how Credit R being in the FIAC is like getting another lifeline because they get access to more liquidity, which helps them deal with the toxic swaps they have. But remember that UBS bought Credit Suisse, so they also hold the toxic swaps, so you can see how everything is connected. Reckoning, and so you can obviously understand that there is something happening here and again with all the due diligence, with all the data that we've seen in the past, we can obviously conclude that again, it's due to the toxic stops of AMC and GA and GA, and of course many more as well, but we knew. Detrimental damage that these tops actually have towards these short sellers, and so you can see how again, even though they're trying to gain access to new lifelines, to new liquidity, they are still in a very, very bad position. And so pair this up with everything we've said we've seen here on the Brink of Switzerland's too big to fail as we see a short set of AMC as we see FDIC said that they are ready if big Wall Street Bank ever failed. 
And as we see talk about AMC CEO talks about bankruptcy is inconceivable you can start to make links of what's actually happening in the market right now where the short sellers who've been preying and betting on the short play of AMC is all starting to see this play actually crumble and collapse. And they're trying to find ways out of it, whether it's with, again, the government fixie, whether it's with the FDIC or any other things that we've seen. Furthermore, you can see how another short seller is also panicking so in the latest update on Citi's lawsuit against the SEC, the CAT system, the market. Maker expands on the commission's inability to manage cyber risk, citing the conveniently timed hack to their X account regarding the Bitcoin ETF product announcement. So we can see, see the desperation coming in from Citadel, who again is partnering up with multiple other short sellers as well to combat against the SE implementation of the CAT system, which again the CAT system brings transparency to the market exposing all the short positions of these short sellers. And so this is why they are obviously against it. You can see here they're obviously talking about the SEC's inability to manage cyber risk. However, what they don't manage to say is how Citadel was also infamous for making a mistake where they quote-unquote had a bug in their system which logged short as long positions which again cost millions and if not billions of dollars for the market. And so again, if you're going to make the point about how CC has an inability to manage cyber risk, then you should also understand that if the CAT system were to be implemented, you guys, even if you guys had a bug which marked short as long as then this will be solved with the CAT system, but obviously. They don't care about that they only care for their own benefits because of this. They are trying to fight the CAT system because it hurts short sellers more than it helps them. On the other hand, it helps retail investors a lot because it makes things clear and gives both sides of the game almost equal advantages. This makes the playing field better for retail investors, which is why they are trying to fight it. You can also see that all of the organizations are red and worth a lot more than $3. They still own shares and lend them out because they believe the price will rise. Being able to use F in any way you want and make money from both ends makes it fun to spread. Every price that the big groups that bought AMC put on it is higher than the present market price. This is still true even at the $911 price level. In other words, if institutions are ready to buy AMC at the current price, they are also ready to keep it even if, if companies are dropping 94%, 60%, and 58%, but people are still willing to hold on, then it makes sense what they think about AMC. It lets us know that they believe in the long-term success of AMC and that they already knew that bankruptcy was out of the question. They also knew that in the long run, the squeeze would happen, which is where they would benefit the most. Again, everything we talked about in this video shows how bad things are for short sellers. Thanks for watching. See you next time. So we can see, see the desperation coming in from Citadel, who again is partnering up with multiple other short sellers as well to combat against the SEC implementation of the CAT system, which again the CAT system brings transparency to the market exposing all the short positions of these short sellers. And so this is why they are obviously against it. You can see here they're obviously talking about the SEC's inability to manage cyber risk. However, what they don't manage to say is how Citadel was also infamous for making a mistake where they quote-unquote had a bug in their system which logged short as long positions which again cost millions and if not billions of dollars for the market. And so again, if you're going to make the point about how CC has an inability to manage cyber risk, then you should also understand that if the CAT system were to be implemented, you guys, even if you guys had a bug which marked short as long as then this will be solved with the CAT system, but obviously. They don't care about that they only care for their own benefits they are fighting the CAT system because as a result, short sellers lose out more than they do. Conversely, it greatly benefits retail investors by providing clarity and nearly equal advantages to both sides of the dispute. They are attempting to oppose it because it improves the playing field for individual investors. Additionally, you can see that every company is red and worth far more than $3. Since they still think the price will grow, they continue to own shares and lend them out.